this video is for educational purposes only. It's not to show you how to repair or fix the issue. So currently I'm driving in the East Coast. I'm just north of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina on I-77. Uh, I'm headed towards, I'm headed southbound, but I've been driving through the East Coast. I, I went through, I started in New York and I went through Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia. Now I'm in North Carolina. I'm headed towards South Carolina, but I've just been going through a bunch of mountains and stuff like that. And I only got 25,000 in my trailer, so I'm not super heavy, but with all the up and downs, uh, my my truck ended up derating. They get those little, little annoying lights right there. So I'm about to hook this up, the OTR diagnostics link. And I had made a, a video like this previously but some this is like part two because i'm pretty sure i have other codes pop up because my truck did derate to 55 miles per hour and my last video it didn't do that so i'm about to hook this up and check it out so when i go to look for the fog codes it don't give me no fog codes on the on the dashboard active fault zero which I do have, I got a buttload of miles, 830,000 miles, that's a lot of miles. So here I'm just connecting to the, to the device, the OTR diagnostic link. Just give me four active codes. So if I go down here at the bottom, go to fault codes, exhaust emission controller. These are all the codes that are popping up. SPN 3364 FMI2, which improper diesel exhaust fluid quality, fault system 25% deray, repair procedures, Faulty depth pressure sensor, faulty depth metering unit, faulty SCR inlet knock sensor, faulty SCR outlet knock sensor. Additional information perform park region. So that's the first code is popping up. The second code 4364 FMI18. After treatment one, SCR conversion efficiency overview, selective catalyst reduction knocks conversion low. Troubleshooting data is valid but it is below the normal operational working range moderately severe level description this file code says when the after treatment control module acm detects that the nox conversion is lower than a calibrated threshold fault system 25 percent d-rate repair procedures check for any gr faults diagnose the faults check for any knock sensor faults diagnose those faults check for any acm temperature or pressure faults diesel fuel or oil contamination faulty MCM faulty depth pressure sensor faulty outlet knock sensor faulty inlet knock sensor faulty ATD faulty SCR temperature sensor this code is so hard to diagnose because look at all the repair procedures that you have to do in order to diagnose this code it's this is the most commonly code that pops up when uh, you have D-rate issues. And I think so many YouTubers talk about this code, but whatever, whatever issues they have going on, I mean, more than likely your truck is gonna be something different because you have to have a really good mechanic to, to be checking all these possible uh, procedures to check to see what's going on with the truck. So we got two more codes. So we got SPM 5246 FMI 15, after treatment SCR inducement severity overview, regulatory fault ignored, derate on, troubleshooting data is valid, but it is above the normal operational working range, least severe level. Description, regu regulatory fault ignored, derate on, 
fault system, 25% D-rate, repair procedure. Check for any emission related fault code, diagnose these fault first. Additional information, park, park SCR efficiency test for extended SCR faults, high idle regeneration for DPF and NOx faults. And then we got 5246 FMI 16. So this is FMI 15 and this one's 16. So this is the, it's almost the same one as the FMI 15, but the FMI 16, it'll, it'll 40% D-rate limit to 55 miles per hour. So this is the code that's gonna uh, limit you to 55 miles per hour. Because sometimes these other codes have popped up, these two have, have popped up, but it won't derate my truck to 55 miles per hour. So this is the one that will uh, limit it. So what I'm fixing to do is just uh, do a park region, which, uh, you know, in the past it has come off, so hopefully those, those lights go away. So that's what I'm fixing to do with the, with my app, which you can also do it with the truck, with the region button. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and do with the with the application. So force DPF region. So I'm just push continue and just tells you how not to cancel the the region. Start force DPF region. So here in a little bit the truck should get into. So I just started the region. Uh, the regions typically last around 33 to 35 minutes, so I'm I'm just gonna time it. So these codes have been such a pain because I've been dealing them for like two years, and I've taken it to a mechanic before, but all they do, is they just do a park region, and the lights go away, or they'll swap parts out, but the issue is still here. So it. It's such a pain because it's so hard to diagnose. You know, I wish I could, it could just tell you what's wrong with it. But what I've done to it is I've replaced the inlet and outlet knock sensor, the death, death metering valve, and I cleaned out the DPF filters. And what else? And I also installed the. Uh, now I forgot what it was called, but and I also installed a def awning kit. But yeah, these codes have been so annoying, such a pain. You know, luckily so far, after doing a park region, they they luckily the codes do do go away. So so sometimes when the lights don't go away, it's because. The, the truck wants you to do a high idle region. Sometimes when you do a region, it does a low idle region. So a high idle region, it, it wants the truck to get hot enough to perform the SCR uh, test, the SCR after treatment test. With the low idle region, it doesn't perform that. So there's a difference between when it does a normal region and between when it want, when the truck wants you to do an SCR after treatment test. So when it does the region, usually because the filters are, are full of soot, so it wants you to do a region to burn off all that soot. But the, the SCR after treatment, I don't know, it has to do something else with the, with the low conversion NOx efficiency. So that's the difference between those two. So whenever you know it derates you and stuff like that, I don't know what the issue is. I mean, you, you saw the 4364 FMI 18. I mean, it can be a whole the whole list of what could be wrong. So usually the lights go away, you know, between 15 and 20 minutes of doing the park region the lights will usually go away. So I'm about to see if, uh, how long it takes. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit and see how it goes. So yeah, like I said, I've taken the truck to the shop before and they, 
they don't do nothing. They just usually run away with my money and it sucks because when I'm over the road, you know, I go to a shop or something like that. I mean, they just make the lights go away and you know, a thousand miles later, you're far away. I mean, you're having to deal with the same issue again. I mean, you can't even go back to, to for them to fix it or whatever. So, I mean, they're just kind of pretty much doing what I'm doing right now, which is just performing an STR uh, after treatment test. Which sucks when you're on the road. That's why I highly recommend, you know, if you're owner operator to have a uh, OTR diagnostic tool. They have some other tools to read code and stuff like that, but you need one that you you can be on the road to do a that lets you do a, a park region. Cause I mean, imagine if you're middle of the night, middle of nowhere, and this happens, and you're stuck having to wait on a mechanic or whatever, and they're all they're gonna do is do a region and clear codes and send you on your merry way. That's it. So I've been watching, you know, I've been watching a ton of videos about this issue, and every single video that I've watched, you know, it's something different that they fixed. So that's why I say it's it's, uh, it's very hard to diagnose this issue. Like you gotta sit there and, and monitor all the levels, you know, all the temperatures. And for something like that, you gotta have a good mechanic to do that. <clears throat> and half these, I mean, half these mechanics out here on the road, I mean, half of them don't even know what they're doing. You know, they ain't even got a Detroit diagnostic, uh, Detroit diesel diagnostic tool. I don't know, man, it sucks. This code sucks, I hate it. There, there's been a few times that I've done a region that the lights don't go away and that's because the truck wants you to do a high idle region. When you don't do a high idle region, the lights are still gonna be there. So it is important for you to do a high idle region. And how do you get to how do you get the truck to do a high idle region? You, it either has to derate you to a 55 mile per hour which I showed you that code or through through a software like the OTR diagnostic link. That's the only way that I have found to do a high idle region. Because the button you push, all it does is a force region, that's all it does. But like I said, it, the truck does not want you to do a region necessarily. It wants you to do an SCR after treatment test. So I'll give y'all an update here in a little bit. Let's see what happens. All right, so, so it's been about 10 minutes since I started the region and the lights went away. So ain't got no lights no more. I do have this light, which is the emission light. But I'm about to go into the OTR diagnostic link up. I'm gonna see what, 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 is, uh, what kind of code it's giving me or what. So here I am back in the application. So I got one active, one active, five inactive. So if I just scroll down, view codes. So this code pops up. This code wasn't on earlier, but now it has popped up. So let's see what it is. SPN 3226 FMI2. After treatment, SCR outlet NOx. Overview, selective catalyst reduction outlet NOx sensor drift. Troubleshooting data is intermittent or incorrect. This means that a loose connection or faulty reading. Description, outlet knock sensor is drifted. Fault sensor dosing is disabled. Repair procedures, damage or leaking after treatment system. Faulty death metering unit. Faulty death dosing unit. Excessive death buildup. Faulty SCR outlet knock sensor. Additional information, perform part region. So I tried looking information on this code. I could not find any information besides this one video. All I said was to do a uh, perform park region and at the end of the region, uh, just go ahead and clear out the code. 
which in the past it has came up before and the only way to get rid of this code is to just to clear it so at the bottom if I go to commands reset fault codes and then reset fault codes that's the only way that I have figured out to get rid of that code which I mean obviously is telling me that there's something wrong with the outlet knock sensor fault TSCR outlet knock sensor but I just had it replaced not too long ago so that may be something worth looking into but like I said after I after I clear the code this code does not pop up again so that kind of tells me that I don't know if maybe it, there's not really an issue with it because I replaced the when I replaced the outlet knock sensor there was a code that was popping up all the time no matter if I cleared it five minutes later it will pop back up because it was faulty this code right here when I clear it it does not come back on until it wants me to do a park region so I so I'm not sure what's going on here with this code honestly so inactive codes I got five inactive codes which another one popped up but it went away immediately let me see if I can figure out which one it is uh, I think it was this one that popped up so this is pretty much 4364 FMI1 so it's almost like FMI18 it just perform SCR efficiency test that's all it that's all it did SCR not conversion efficiency low inactive so this is the only one active and it's gonna stay active until I clear it reset fault codes so at the end of the region I'm gonna reset the fault codes and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and also do a reset after treatment which this process clears ash accumulators and this process will reset the SCR stored data so I mean it gives you a lot of live data also a lot of good information so the one that I like to look at is the after treatment SCR inlet NOx and after treatment SCR outlet NOx so this one you know usually between 250 to 300 this that's where this one will stay and this one will stay uh, below 50 that's when it's at its optimum that the lights will go away if there's some issue going on the the lights don't go away I usually come here to see what these two are doing but I mean it has all this other information you know to be honest I mean I don't know what's good or bad you know, I know this a mechanic or anything like that. But these two are the ones that give me the most information. So, I mean, that's the lid. You can go to grid. I mean, it just changes the, the style there. So, yeah, so this is a, a pretty cool application, you know. I, definitely worth getting. You can get yours. Link in the description, god dang. Man, if you're dealing with this issue, I just want to let you know that you are not alone. I feel your pain. You know, I travel across the United States and every time I'm going through mountains, you know, I always have this fear of it's gonna derate the truck. You know, it's uh, such a pain, you know, especially when I'm heavy. When I'm really heavy, that's when I get more worried. You know, right now, 25,000, you know, it's not super heavy, but it's not light either. But it's so it's so annoying it really is but I will say you know I've been pretty lucky so far because I have not had my truck towed to the shop you know every time I stop to do a region uh, the lights will go away and will let me keep running so I've been very lucky very blessed for that you know them them tow tow shops you know they they like to charge an arm and a leg and the, the OTR, you know, diagnostic tool, that has helped me a lot too. So I don't know, man, I don't know what could be the issue. What What is going on? I've done so many things to this truck, to the one box. I mean, it's pushing over 800,000 miles. So, I mean, 
What could possibly be wrong? What can I do to fix the issue? Tell me, somebody tell me and I will do it if it fixes the issue. But that's the thing, will it fix the issue or it's just gonna keep me running for another thousand miles before I get those lights again? I don't know, I don't know. So I'm just gonna do my regen and get back on the road. You now luckily I was able to find this little truck stop. I was about four miles away when it started, when it derailed So I had to limp it in here pretty much at 55 miles per hour. It's funny cause I passed this Snyder truck, you know, right? I thought it was all big and bad, I passed him. And a few seconds later, he's passing me. Exactly, I gotta go 55 and they go 65. Now I look like a freaking moron in a way. He's probably like, why would you pass me just to go slower? I hate when people do that to me, like especially like the smaller cars, they pass you and then they decide to go the same speed as you or even slower. Like that annoys the crap out of me. And I bet he was looking at me like I was stupid or something.